a brand new day. Stretch out, touch your toes, blink your eyes and blow your nose and say thank you. It's a brand new day. Hello and welcome to our last summer activity morning. Today we've got another story for you and it's a parable about two sons. Of course we'll also have a craft for you, but first here's Andrew with a song. Hello, I've come to sing you a song again today, Andrew here, and we're going to sing a song that we sing at Crossroads and it's called It's an Adventure Following Jesus. If you don't know it, we can learn it, we'll sing it through a few times and then um, perhaps by the end you'll, you'll get to know it. It's an adventure following Jesus. It's an adventure learning of Him. It's an adventure living for Jesus. It's an adventure following Him. Let's go where He leads us. Turn away from wrong. For we know we can trust Him to help us as we go along. It's an adventure following Jesus, it's an adventure learning of Him. It's an adventure living for Jesus, it's an adventure following Him. Let's go where He leads us, turn away from wrong. For we know we can trust Him to help us as we go along. It's an adventure following Jesus, it's an adventure learning of Him. It's an adventure living for Jesus, it's an adventure following Him. There, hope you enjoyed that. See you again next time. Thanks Angie. Now, here's Jonathan with the story. You know, sometimes I'm not a very good listener. I don't listen, and because I don't listen, I don't always know what I should be doing. There was a time, it was a long time ago, when I was still at school, and we were making bread, and the teacher gave us all these instructions that we had to follow to make the perfect loaf of bread. But I didn't listen to the teacher. I thought I knew what I was doing, so I went off and I did it all on my own. And at the end of that lesson, while all the other children had a lovely, soft, nicely baked loaf of bread. But I had a black, solid lump. It was like a rock. It was absolutely horrible. The problem was that I hadn't listened to what the teacher wanted me to do. I hadn't followed the instructions I had been given. You know, Jesus told a parable. It was about a man who had two sons. One son didn't seem to listen to his father, yet in the end he did what his father said. The other son, well the other son looked like he was listening to his father, but he never did what his father said. Let me read the parable to you, because it's actually quite short. It's found in Matthew 21, verses 28 to 31. A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. And then Jesus says, Which of the two did the will of his father? And the people answer, The first. So, when the man asked his first son to go and work in the field, he said, no, dad, I'm not going to do that. But afterwards, he felt bad about what he said. And he decided that he would go and do the jobs that his father had asked him to do. He didn't seem like he was listening, but really he was. He listened and he did what he was told. Maybe you've been like that. Maybe there's something that your mum or dad has asked you to do, and at first you've refused to do it, but afterwards you've thought about it, and perhaps you've felt bad about not doing it. So in the end, you've gone and you've done 
what they asked you to do. Maybe you've done that. If you haven't done that, I'm pretty sure that you will have behaved like the other son behaved at some point. You see, he was asked to do a job in the field by his dad. And he said, of course, dad, I'll go and do it. But he never did. Maybe your mum or your dad has asked you to go and tidy your bedroom. And you've said, yeah, I'll get straight on it. But then you've never done it. Perhaps your friends have called round or you've gone out to play with them and you've just forgotten all about it. You said you would do it, but you never. You know, there are a lot of people who are like that with God. They say the right things, but they haven't really listened to God. And they don't do the things that God asks them to do. You see, God says we must love him. And many people say, yes, I love God. But they don't act like they love God. They don't show God that they love him. God says we should be sorry for all the wrong things that we do. Many people don't ever say sorry to God. A lot of people don't even think they have anything that they need to say sorry to God for. God says we must trust in Jesus. And lots of people say that they're trusting in Jesus. And thankfully, many of those who do are real Christians. They have a real trust in Jesus. But some who say they're trusting Jesus actually don't. We need to listen to God. We need to do what he says. We need to love him. We need to be sorry for the wrong things that we've done. And we need to trust Jesus. Some people are like that first boy in that story. They hear about trust in Jesus and they think to themselves, that's not for me. I'll never do that. But as they think more about it, they actually change their minds. And in the end, they do what God says. They love him. They say sorry for the wrong things that they've done. And they trust in Jesus. In our activity mornings over these summer weeks, we've tried to teach you a lot about what God has to say. And the message I want to leave you with at the end of all these activity mornings is just this. Listen to what God says and do what God says. Love him. Be sorry for the wrong things that you've done and trust Jesus. Now, I hope you really, really enjoyed these last six weeks. And I look forward to joining with you again for more activities uh, in the coming school term. Goodbye. Noah built the most enormous boat that kept the birds and animals afloat. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and no one lived his life for him. Moses led his people to the sea, taking them away from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Moses lived his life for him. comes to me. David fought Goliath and he won. A humble shepherd boy became a king. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and David lived his life for him. Daniel was inside a lion's den, but God brought him to safety once again. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Daniel lived his life for him. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you.
thank you that you are just the same when it comes to me, when it comes to me. Jesus died to take away our sin, so we could get to know our God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our life for Him. to me when it comes to me now are you ready for your craft in our story today the two sons were supposed to be working in a field or a garden and today Steph's going to show you how to make your own garden hello my name is Stephanie and I'm here to show you how to make your own craft garden. And it's gonna look like this. So we're gonna make the garden itself. We're gonna plant some crest seeds today. And if you keep watering them in two weeks time, they might look like my crest garden here. And we're gonna make this flower to go at the back of the garden. Okay. Now, you should have been given a craft pack looking like this. So let's see what we've got inside. You should have a green rectangle of paper with a pencil line down one end. You should have a white paper cup, tin foil container, a cotton wool pad, 10 strips of paper in a colour, it could be orange or red or yellow, a circle, again, there are lots of different colours, you'll have a coloured circle, a coloured straw, and 15, if I've counted correctly, wooden sticks. And then the last thing you should have is a packet of crest seeds. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the green rectangular paper. Now one side there's no pencil line, but on the other side there's a pencil line. And this is important. Do not stick your lolly sticks on that end. Leave that bit blank. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our glue and we're going to cover the green piece of paper in glue, but not beyond that pencil line. Okay, so not on this bit, but on the rest of it, it's all covered in glue. And then we're going to take our wooden sticks and starting at the pencil line, you can put your first one right up to the line, like that. Make sure it is in line with the bottom of the paper and not sticking over or not sticking up like this. So you want it. right on the bottom. It will stick over one end because that's going to be the top of the fence. Okay? And then you need to space all the wooden sticks out along your paper. So you'll start spacing your sticks out like that and keep going until all 15 sticks have been stuck on. Now, when you have stuck all 15 sticks on, remembering to leave a space between them, doesn't matter if the spaces are different sizes. The two things that matter is that you leave that piece of card, green paper, free from a lolly stick. That you put the lolly sticks at the so that they are at the bottom of the green paper on one side. So these are all on the bottom. See. And then they're poking over the top on the other side. Now, when you have stuck them all down like that, 
what you're going to do is you're going to turn it into the garden, the outside of the garden. So this time, we do need to stick glue all the way along that strip. And when you've done that, so there's now glue on here, you turn the paper all the way around and you stick that piece of paper firmly together. And what you'll end up with is a cylinder, green inside, and then the wooden sticks around the outside making your fence. Okay? And when you've got that far, put it to one side. Right. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to make the flower. So you'll need a straw, your circle, and your 10 bits of paper. Now this time, each bit of paper needs to be folded in half. Okay? So fold all 10 bits of paper. Now yours could be orange like mine, or yellow, or red. Make sure they're all folded. When you've folded all 10, you'll need your glue again. And you'll need to put a tiny bit of, well, a little bit of glue just at one end of the paper. And then you want to stick this end onto that one like that. But because we've only put a tiny bit of glue, it means there's gonna be no glue here and just a piece of glue at the end. So you're gonna end up creating 10 petals, okay? When you've done all 10, you need to get your circle and cover it in glue. So it's like that, lots and lots of glue. And you get your petal and you stick it on to the circle. And then you get your next petal that you've done and you stick it next to it, okay? And then you get your next petal and you stick that next to that one. It can get a little bit tricky, so you might need some help and you're gonna stick them all the way around and you're gonna end up with it looking like that. So all your petals have been stuck all the way around the circle so one side will look like the flower and one side will look a bit rough like that. Now, when all your petals are stuck on, you'll need to get your straw. You will need to put glue on the back of the petals and you'll need to be very patient and your fingers could get a bit sticky. You need to put your straw onto the back like that and stick it down. Now you're gonna to need to leave that to dry for a little bit so that it holds. And if you want to wash your hands or wipe your hands, you can. So we put that to one side. And if you've got a wipe, you can clean off the glue. And if not, you can go and wash your hands. Now, so now we have got our fence on the outside of our garden and we've got our flower. So now we need to do is we need to make the garden so we can plant our cress. So inside your fence, you need to put your white cup, okay? And it will fit right the way in and actually it will drop down a little bit, okay? Now, this is the tricky bit. You need to get your flower and put the stalk between the white cup and the fence. Now what I do is I just bend that in a bit, like that, okay? And then I poke the straw in. And hopefully, when it's all dry, it will stick like that. So you see the straw's gone down in between the outside green and fence and the white cup. Now, then you need to get your tin foil, tin foil, and you need to put that on the top. Again, it can be a little bit tricky, but it balances on the top of the white cup, 
okay? Then you get your cotton wool pad and put that in to the foil container right at the bottom. Now what you need to do is you need to make sure that, that cotton wool pad is wet. So you need to get a little bit of water and you need to pour the water on to that cotton wool pad. And then your garden is ready for you to plant your cress. So you've got your garden, the garden fence, you've got a little silver foil container with wet cotton wool disc there. And then you get your packet of cress seeds. And again, somebody might be able to help you cut this open or you can unpeel it or rip it open. And in there, there should be enough cress seeds for you to scatter it all over a piece of cotton wool. Now I'm going to move my phone a minute so that you can see that it's all over that piece of cotton wool pad. Okay? Now all you need to do is make sure it doesn't dry out. So I'd put it on a windowsill and I'd make sure each day that that piece of cotton wool pad is damp, it's still wet. So you can just tip a bit of water on each day or mum and dad could help you or your brother and sister could help you. And then you'll start to see the cress grow and after two weeks, you'll end up with a cress garden. Have fun. I hope you enjoy your craft. Please remember to send me some pictures of the things that you make. Now this is our last session of the summer. But keep an eye out for things that we're planning over the next half term. We'll be praying for you as you all start to go back to your schools or preschool groups. But we hope to see you back at some of our church activities as soon as it is safe to do so. Get up out of bed, have a yawn and scratch your head and say It's a brand new